thank you as always for watching or listening today. Liam Hartree here with another episode of Presenting Champions today, talking with Yannick, King of the Streets fighter. No rules, no rounds, no limits, bare knuckle fighting at secret locations um, around Europe. So today we're going to be basically getting a glimpse into that world that's uh, often not seen by outsiders, basically, and what it's actually like in there. Uh, as well as that, Yannick's also competed in kickboxing, so we're going to be talking about that. A uh, very exciting story to tell and a very exciting future ahead for this man as well. So uh, before we get into all that, just Yannick, big thank you for making the time for this, by the way. That's, uh, yeah, that's no problem. problem. Thank you for the innovation. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. So let's get into it then. King of the Streets, um, you know, some people know about it, some people don't know about it um, and everything, but it's an amazing organization. So starting at the beginning, what inspired you to actually compete in no rules fighting you know what what initially um gave you that idea in the beginning yeah i'm always down for a fight no matter what kind of fight um king of the street is the hardest challenge for every fight i think it's the hardest uh yeah and i don't care what kind of fight i'm always down for it yeah and uh where did you first discover it like did you see the fights on youtube or did someone tell yeah. you about it? yeah i i saw tom from germany fighting um, on YouTube and uh, yeah I get contacted uh, from Kotz they they wrote me and yeah I, I said yes time to fight yeah amazing you jumped in there so talk us through the fight itself and how it went now with this I don't have like a really specific question about about it but just share anything that really sticks in your mind about what the experience was like uh, fighting for them how the fight went all that uh, all that side of things please. yeah yeah i had an unlucky start i uh, got a shot to the liver and dropped down um, with my back on the conceit um and i didn't uh, see anything after this it was like 20 seconds in the fight and yeah i get several punches um with the with elbows on the back of my head and after one and a half minutes the ref stopped the fight um yeah that's all i remember um and i had three weeks preparation and it was the first fight for me in general yeah. so i never had an amateur fight before king of the street was my first fight yeah mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense well you definitely jumped in the deep end and i've got a lot of respect for that i mean you know with even though the fight didn't go um, necessarily the way you wanted it to, uh, there's no shame or anything in that because getting in there, it is the toughest out there. I mean, you know, it's, it, there's nothing else like it. And I've interviewed fighters yeah. from every sport you can you can do, you know, and there's nothing like like in the streets. So big respect on that. One thing I like to ask people um, is about the atmosphere, you know, at the venue. I mean, whether that's like the crowd, like the energy, you know, the vibe in the place. Obviously, you, you can see it a bit on YouTube, but it's different mm -hmm. being there. So what, what was it like in terms of like the venue and, and like the setup and you know anything you remember from that side of it? Yeah, uh, on my event it, there were around 300 or 250 uh, people from around uh, Europe, from all over, from Sweden, from Germany a lot. And the energy was heated as fuck. <sighs> really, really heated and everybody in there was hyped and it was great, really great. And after after the event, the police tried to break up up the event, but didn't get through us. It was a really a hard situation for us. Yeah. Okay. So 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 the, so I don't know how much you can say about this. So if it's too much, just stop me at any time. But um, obviously, so the police what they came in and they tried to actually stop the event. And what you guys pushed them back out type of thing, or what? Yeah. You know, is... Yeah. More. I can't say any more, but. They tried. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, fair play. I mean, uh, that's that's something else in itself. So respect on that. Okay. Do you think that you will um, come back and fight for them again? You know, do you plan to, to fight for King of the Streets like like uh, in the future or anything? Yeah, my plan is to fight some amateur fights first, um, but I want to fight there uh, with a good preparation. My last fight on courts were like three weeks preparation. So I jumped in for, for another fighter um, and yeah, next time I want a good preparation, 
some amateur fights first and then I want the challenge again. Yeah, yeah, that would be good, you know, because you've got in there, you know what it's like. So now, yeah, a bit more time in, in like a camp. Yeah. I should do you. The only other thing uh, with that before we move on to uh, to other things, any words about your opponent? Because you know, I just want to give uh, give him a mention as well. Um, again, I don't know how much you can say about it, but just because the two of you are in there, like it's fair to to give him a mention um, about that. Like, have you have you spoken to him since? Anything anything like that, or what's the situation? Um, yeah, as my opponent was uh, a bit heavier than I expected, mm -hmm. um, but he's a really good, experienced fighter. He was one and zero at courts. Um, yeah, some guys are afraid to fight him. I hear, but yeah, he's a really good fighter. Yeah, I uh, wrote a bit with him, but nothing really happened. So, well, and um, contact between us. Yeah, but no, it's, it's good to give him, him a shout out as well because uh, anyone who gets in there, you know, they they deserve respect. Of Absolutely. course. Yeah, and and respect to you as well because uh, you know getting in there like that with you know three weeks like your first Thank fight, you. Thank you. absolutely jumped in the deep end. You know, so uh, awesome. All right then. So uh, moving into the uh, into some other areas, you know, that we were talking about before. You also fought in kickboxing as well uh, in Muay Thai. In uh, yeah. So um, this was seemed quite an interesting story because I saw on your Instagram that you were pretty much. Yeah. Again, you jumped in there, you took the fight short notice. Um, so walk us through like what happened in that situation, um, because it, it, it sounds very cool. Yeah, I, I flew to Mexico to train Muay Thai, to train uh, at Tulum Muay Thai from Eddie Farrell and his wife. A really hot uh, Thai camp. And yeah, a friend of mine asked me to get there. And I said, yeah, let's go. So one day after arrival, um, I was at the Muay Thai event from Tulum Muay Thai and one fighter asked me because his opponent didn't show up uh, if I want to fight. So I said, yeah, but I never trained Muay Thai before and didn't even know the rules of Muay Thai. No. And yeah, but it doesn't matter for me. Fight is a fight. I took challenges. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, but my opponent was an experienced fighter, so I think he had uh, six wins on six fights. I mean, he was a good, good guy. All respect to him. Yeah, yeah, and and the same thing as King of the Streets, you know, because I like to talk about this. What was the the atmosphere and the thing like at that place? Because the reason I ask this is like Mexicans, brilliant fight fans. You know, I do a lot with boxing as well. And you know they're some of the most passionate like like fans of, of any type of fighting in the world. So mm. being in this place where you know wherever it was in Mexico, fighting in front of them, what was the what was the crowd like? What was your reception like from them? If you get what I mean with all this, you know, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Mexico. Uh, the Mexicans are really uh, nice guys. Love them. Always want uh, to see fights. And the, the crowd was was really really nice. Uh, yeah, give me a shout out after the fight. So yeah, I ne don't expect it to fight there, but uh, yeah, I was really happy to fight there after this. Yeah, yeah, it must have been a very cool, uh, very very cool experience. Um, and yeah, as you say, uh, training with Eddie as well. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Legend, you know, so that must have been absolutely a very, very special experience. Are there other locations that you've sort of traveled to 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 train in, or is that like the main one so far? Uh, uh, not the... yet, not yet. But I going to train in Croatia in August. Okay. In in split, and one go to back uh, one go back to Mexico in October, again uh, to Tulum to Eddie. Um, mm -hmm. to train there two or three months. Yeah, I really learned much from Eddie. He's a really nice guy, a really nice gym, good coaching stuff. Learned so much from him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he uh, yeah, he is a legend, an absolute legend. Yeah. Well, so we'll look at the future in a minute as well, and, and your future plans. But before we do, there's one other fight um, that I was going to ask you about. I saw on your Instagram there was a poster for 
um, pure violence, but I'm not sure if that fight actually took place or if it fell through. Um, but what what was the situation? Again, I don't know how much you can say with with mm. pure violence. Like King of the Streets, I know. But you were obviously booked to fight. Um, are you going to be like rebooked with them, or, or do you know like what the situation is, just out of interest? No, I wanted, but something happened and the event didn't take place. So pure violence is is over. So there are no fights in future. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that because I had a guy on here uh, yesterday who fought for them. Um, you know, and it was like one of the first times I'd heard about it. So just to, just to get a feel for that. Very cool. So moving forward to the future then as well. Yeah. Um, your future plans for fighting, your future dreams and goals. Like where you want to take your career from here, basically. And yeah. what's let's let's talk a bit about that. Like like what's motivating you next? What's coming yeah. next? My plan is to train harder and fight some amateur fights. And I want to train all over the world. I want to go to Thailand next year to to sharp my striking skills. And I work here in 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 Germany to to pay everything. And yeah, it's it's my life. So I want to go professional, but uh, I don't hurry. Mm. Well, that's it. Yeah, take it take it a step at a time and just yeah. lay a solid foundation, as they say. Yeah. And uh, I'm only 22 right now, so mm. I have time. Yeah, you do. You do have time. And the last question really is: uh, I just want to give a. I always give a shout out to people who support fighters and what I mean by that is fans whether they're close people or like friends and family or whether it's you know people who, who you don't know but they're messaging you on social media but like the, the, the people who try and encourage you to do what you do whatever form they come in obviously uh, no no fighter you know gets by without them really you know some supporters so what would you say to um, any of your supporters out there which as, as the last question yeah I think uh, everyone who support me I I appreciate it and I fuck everyone who hates me. So, yeah. Good answer, man. Good answer. Well, you know, it's been a good insight into, um, as I say, into your life, into King of the Streets and how it works and different things and in your future. And I know in that way you're just starting out with, with your journey in fighting, um, you know, so there's some big things out there yet to come. I'm not just saying that. I mean, I can see that you've got that determination to, you know, to lay the solid foundation, build on it one step at a time and, and do some big things. So uh, definitely wishing you best of luck with that. And the last thing that we yeah. do is we, uh, like a big thank you for your time once again. And appreciate you doing thank this. Thank you for having me. Thank you really much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there will be more videos coming soon.